Now, back on our blog, we created a series called Through the Vortex. This is where I went by series by series of New Who and spoke about what worked, what didn't, best moments, and so much more. So far, we have covered series one to five in blog form, but today I thought it would be fun to take the series one uh, post and make that into a video. And for those of you that were enjoying the blog form posts, um, series six is coming soon. I'm Harry. This is the Review Lab. Let's look through the vortex. Now, back in 2005, Doctor Who blasted back on our screens with new writers, a new Doctor, a new companion, a new TARDIS, and a whole lot of new adventures. Now, unlike Classic Who, there was one big difference on the series' return. The Doctor was now the last of his kind. This was due to the time war that took place on screen, and this helped to explain the series' absence during the 16-year hiatus. Of course, except for the film in 1997. My planet's gone. It's dead. It burned like the earth. It's just rocks and dust. Before it's time. What happened? There was a war and we lost. A war with who? <clears throat> what about your people? I'm a Time Lord. I'm the last of the Time Lords. They're all gone. Now, the Ninth Doctor was played by Christopher Eccleston, and he burst onto our screens in an episode titled Rose. This was written by the showrunner, Rusty Davis. The Doctor we met was charming, friendly, and yet also had a dark side, a side that could also be shown that he's grieving. The Doctor had seen and done things that we learn about in later episodes. We learn that he was the one that ended the Time War by destroying his home planet and everybody on it. Now, learning this was a shock to audiences, but it clearly shows why the Doctor is the way he is in this series. He carries this guilt fresh with him throughout this run. Now, casting Christopher Eccleston, for me, is stellar casting. He carries his role with such gravitas and charisma, and yet he also shows the more haunting and darker side of the Doctor on these adventures. However, the breakout star in this series is Billy Piper as Rose Tyler. We go through series one through her eyes. A 19-year-old girl living on a council estate, just wanting more out of her life than wanting to see the universe when the chance is offered up to her. We see her fall in love with this new lifestyle and we go to love this relationship she has with the Doctor. Billy can go from conveying joy and excitement to desperation and despair in a single scene. And it really is amazing to see. Now thanks to the new showrunner, Rusty Davis, who is also coming back for this year's 60th specials and beyond, the show came back with strong episodes that still haunt people to this day. What really stands out from series one is its story arc and how subtle it is. Now a story arc can be important for any show, but it's how it's executed which is critical. Now in series one, the words bad wolf keep appearing, but only subtly. It can be a mention in episode two, it can be sprayed onto the side of the TARDIS in episode 5, or even mentioned as a throwaway line of dialogue in episode 6. It sticks in the audience's mind. So then when the finale rolls around and we find out just how vital these words are, we learn that it's been a major story plot point tying Rose and the Doctor together all this time. It really blows you away. And learning that these subtle hints have just been building up to such a climactic ending... It helps leave the viewer on the edge of their seat and it makes you want to come back for the next series to see what they do next. It's all thanks to the writing. It's a testament to how strong Series 1 is of the show. Series 1 also comes with some truly standout episodes and two-parters. One that stands out, however, is the two-parter of The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. If you're unsure of what these episodes are, just think about the line... Are you my mummy? Seeing these episodes when you're seven years old is frightening and yet remarkable. Having this antagonist that only has a single line of dialogue haunted viewers, especially like myself, for years to come. And it's what the show does best. However, for me, the standard episodes of the entire season are the finale episodes, Bad Wolf and The Parting of the Ways. Now, when these episodes came around, I simply remember the buzz that surrounded it. Everyone was talking about it. The show had come back onto our screens 11 weeks prior and had done so much better than anyone could have hoped for. It was funny, it was adventurous, and yet it was also dark. The finale packed in everything we loved about the series into two 45-minute episodes. Now, for context, the Doctor and Coa are transported to Satellite 5 and have to take part in deadly game shows. These were set up by the Doctor's foes, the Daleks. Now, the finale was also the last we would see of Christopher Eccleston's incarnation of the Doctor. We see the Doctor relive the trauma of the Time War in his final battle culminating in him sacrificing himself to save Rose, 
which results in his regeneration. It's a lot to pack into a finale, and yet it does it with grace. It keeps audiences on the edge of their seats throughout both episodes. When part one finished, there was a week's wait, but yet everyone was talking about it. It was in newspapers, it was on the news. For me, these two episodes are the strongest of the seasons for a variety of reasons. The writing, the music, the spectacle, but most importantly, the performances. The performances of the show's leads in both episodes is astounding. This is Emergency Program 1. Rose, now listen, this is important. If this message is activated, then it can only mean one thing. We must be in danger, and I mean fatal. I'm dead or about to die any second with no chance of escape. No. And that's okay. Hope it's a good death. But I promise to look after you, and that's what I'm doing. The TARDIS is taking you home. I won't let you. And I bet you're fussing and moaning now. Typical. But hold on and just listen a bit more. The TARDIS can never return for me. Emergency program one means I'm facing an enemy that should never get their hands on this machine. So this is what you should do. Let the TARDIS die. Just let this old box gather dust. No one can open it, no one will even notice it. Let it become a strange little thing standing on a street corner. And over the years, the world will move on and the box will be buried. And if you want to remember me, then you can do one thing. That's all, one thing. Have a good life. Do that for me, Rose. Have a fantastic life. Especially from Billy Piper's Rose braving herself against the Daleks to Christopher Eccleston's Doctor facing his regeneration with bravery rather than fearing it. Not to mention Captain Jack Harkness fighting the good fight being a hero against the Daleks. The performances and the finale stands out as one of the strongest in the show's history. Now you may not watch this series but if there is a standout moment I want you to watch it's a moment in episode one, Rose. She asks the Doctor who he is. This is his answer. Do you know, like we were saying, about the Earth revolving? It's like when you're a kid. The first time they tell you that the world's turning and you just can't quite believe it because everything looks like it's standing still. I can feel it. The turn of the Earth. The ground beneath our feet is spinning at a thousand miles an hour and the entire planet is hurtling around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour, and I can feel it. We're falling through space, you and me, clinging to the skin of this tiny little world and we let go. That's who I am. Now forget me, Rose Tyler. Go home. This is the moment I fell in love with this show. It's a simple scene, but yet when you pair it with the music, the writing and the performance, it sticks in your mind for years to come. If you don't watch the entire show, just watch this scene. It's absolutely fantastic. Series 1 was a fantastic comeback for this show. It packed everything from zombies to fighting aliens and Downing Street. It had love, warmth, but also heartbreak and despair. The leads were great, the stories were strong, and it had it all packed into 13 episodes. Series 1 put this show once again on a path to greatness. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Doctor Who's 60th anniversary is just around the corner and we are so excited. Look out for more videos surrounding that and more videos in our Through the Vortex series coming soon with a Series 2 video on its way. What do you think of Series 1? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.